Today's talk will be um, what if medicine is wrong about the root causes of obesity and type 2 diabetes. And so hopefully by the end of this talk I would have shown you enough that what we've been doing is not working. And then so if it's not working then maybe we should change of what we're doing. Okay? <clears throat> So, uh, my name is Dr. Andy Fung. I went to medical school um, in Pomona, California, graduated in 2007. And then I did my family practice residency in 2010, uh, finished it in Michigan. And then since then, I practice traditional medicine. You know, I write pills, I write lots of pills really fast. Um, <laughs> Uh, until, until February 2017, and we're going to come back on that day, um, you know, and, and to show you why it's so important. And since then, uh, I've been using a low-carb ketogenic lifestyle plus intermittent fasting um, to treat my patients and to get them healthier versus just writing pills really fast. <coughs> So, uh, disclosure, you know, I am very biased. I am super biased, to be honest. I, um, I, I push low carb really hard, and then I've been doing it for three years. I converted my family to a low carb diet. I convert my in-laws to low carb. I convert <laughs> everyone I know to low carb, so, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, and then um, I just opened a clinic, a, a medical clinic um, in Cary. We focus on primary care uh, through uh, weight loss if you have weight problem. Um, but again, Amy, um, <coughs> Amy said you don't have to be obese to be sick. So obesity is just part of it. So, <coughs> so because uh, when you see diabetes, you tend to see obesity. And the reverse is when you see obesity, you tend to see diabetes. So the best term they come up with is just merge the dawn two words together. It's called diabetes. So, <laughs> so what is this diabetes all about, right? <clears throat> so um, if we look at the adult population, so the metabolic syndrome that we keep talking about, the five things, you know, um, the blood pressure, the waistline, the triglyceride, the HDL, and all that. For adults, nine out of 10 have one of those risk factors. Nine out of 10 adults. And for children, it's one out of three. And the next question is, um, why is it so bad? And so I'm gonna show you why. <coughs> So when we have diabetes and obesity for a long time, either or, and then we end up having a heart attack and we'll need, you know, <clears throat> Dr. Thorne to help us. And, and, <laughs> and then uh, not just that, but you know, you can have a stroke, you know. When you have a stroke, it's a life-changing event, you know. And then, um, and then if you're over 50 years old, if you go blind, the leading cause of that is diabetes. And then, um, and then with diabetes, when you, if you have it long enough, you know, you start having numbness, then tingling, then can't feel a darn thing, then you step on something and doctor throw antibiotic at you and it doesn't get better and they're gonna start cutting. And next thing you know, it's the toes and the foot, you know. Ultimately, with diabetes is that the kidneys will die. The, if you live long enough, the kidneys will die. And when they're dead, you're gonna be sitting on something called a dialysis machine four hours a day, three days a week, for about two decades until you die. Is that how it should work? And I don't think that's how it should work. <clears throat> so what do we do for diabetes? What do we do for diabetes? So the current treatment is it must be a calorie problem. We have too much calories in and we don't have enough calories out. So that boils down to we eat too much. And when we eat, we eat way, way too much. So it's called gluttony. And, and then when we don't exercise, then we're like, oh, that's why, that's why you're fat, you know. <clears throat> Is that true? And then so I'm gonna point to you that it's not true, you know. <clears throat> so eat less, move more has been prescribed for like a long time. <laughs> and then uh, if it's working, then why are we all sick? And obviously it's not working, okay? <clears throat> 
So here you go. <clears throat> so eat less and move more does not work to keep your weight down over time. Then what is the problem? You know, so um, usually what happens is that if we, if we eat less after a few months, usually about six months, your metabolism goes down. And what happens next is you start feeling cold. And so it's called basal metabolic rate slows down. And then people say, well, you know, just try to exercise to increase your, you know, energy expenditure. And the last check was like, um, if you want to lose a pound of weight, you literally have to walk or run 20 miles. And last time I checked, I cannot do half of that, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> and then even if you could do half of that, the weight goes back after six months. And you're like, oh, come on. So what's going on, right? <clears throat> Why? So why? So the weight loss dilemma, the weight loss dilemma, the dilemma is that it is not a willpower problem. If anybody tells you that you're sick and obese, it's lack of willpower problem, you say you're stupid because it's not. Okay? <clears throat> because I have never met a patient in my life that, oh, Dr. Fung, I want to be fat and obese and become diabetic. Okay? It's just not. <laughs> so, so what can the reasons be then if it's not a real proud problem? The problems are uh, biology. It's your biology. <clears throat> it's your brain called neuroscience and boils down to various hormone imbalances and in particular the insulin imbalance that we have. And then so, so for the rest of the talk, I'm going to teach you about how to fix hyperinsulinemia problem. <clears throat> so in diabetes, type 2, and obesity, um, <clears throat> all of them, unless you have diabetes, type 2, for way too long, all of them have a high insulin problem. It's called hyperinsulinemia disease. It's an insulin disease. So people are like, well, where does insulin come from then? Insulin can come from the shot that you give if you have diabetes for too long. Or insulin can come from your own pancreas that you're making way, way too much. And then, <clears throat> and then people are like, okay, then what does it mean? <clears throat> for all people with diabetes type 2, all of them have obesity. Every single type 2 diabetic have an obesity problem. And people are like, no, it can't be true. I see a skinny one with diabetes. Because only 80% of them are obviously overweight. You can look at them and say, look, you know, I know why you have diabetes. Then the other 20% are known as the skinny fat. You know, they look skinny on the outside, but fat on the inside. So it's called TOFI. It's called central obesity. <coughs> So, but all of them, 100% of them, have high insulin disease, okay? So, so that, and so, so you say, well, why, uh, you know, so how do I know if I have high insulin disease? Ask your doctor for the insulin, you know, so. So, what does insulin do? How does insulin drive diabetes? How does insulin drive obesity? And how does insulin drive diabetes? <coughs> Insulin has two main functions. First function is high insulin promotes the body to store fat. Fat can come from carbohydrate, fat can come from protein, or fat can come from in ingested fat. So insulin tells your body to make more or store more new fat. But insulin also has another problem, another function. Insulin tells your body to don't burn fat. So basically, high insulin tells your body to, hey, make more new fat and don't burn any fat. So, <clears throat> so the next question is, well, how does it work then? 